Hi, I'm Jennifer with True Health For You, and today I have a really interesting video. You know, I think I say that in the beginning of all my videos, but this one's really good, I promise. <laughs> and I guarantee you haven't heard um, tips like these before, and if you have, you're awesome. <laughs> so this video is all about how you can improve your sleep. Uh, and the thing that I want you to first understand is at nighttime, when we're getting ready for bed, our body is already in a stress state. And that's because our thyroid and our metabolism, it doesn't appreciate the dark and especially cold and dark. So you might actually notice that your sleep gets worse during the winter time. And that's not just because of fluke, this is for a reason. And that's because darkness is really stressful on the body. So, People might notice as they age, or if they're dealing with hypothyroidism or other illness, illnesses, their sleep gets compromised. And that is because your cells aren't able to produce energy more efficiently. You know, a lot of people think that when we sleep, everything kind of slows down. And in fact, it takes a lot of energy production to keep us alive while we're sleeping. Because not only are we falling asleep at a, at a stressful time for our bodies, um, we're not eating, we're not drinking anything. So it's up to our backup system or backup generator, as I call it, um, to support our body. And if you've been not eating consistently throughout the day, not getting enough of the, the minerals and the nutrition that your body needs to support us in sleep, you're going to start noticing symptoms of that. So if you're waking up in the middle of the night to go pee, if it's difficult for you to fall asleep, if you have nightmares, sleep apnea, snoring, uh, you wake up groggy, um, uh, if, you're, if you notice that you're a mouth breather, these are all signs that you're, you are in a stress state and you're having symptoms of a low thyroid function and that you are not producing good energy at night. I was going to say at just at night, but really during the day and at night. So let me talk a little bit more about this backup system, this backup generator. What it is, is when we, when our liver runs out of glycogen and that is stored sugar. So when we take in glucose during the day, our liver stores it and creates glycogen. It's just converted glucose. Think of your liver as like a pantry right? It stores the sugar away. And at night while we sleep, when the brain sends a signal like, hey, you know, I need more fuel, the liver is supposed to just release a little bit of glycogen. Well, if you haven't eaten enough carbs or glucose, fructose, you know, whatever it is that you prefer during the day, that pantry is going to run empty pretty fast. And so what happens is your body has to compensate. So it sends maladaptive stress hormones like adrenaline, cortisol, aldosterone, serotonin. And then because of these, parathyroid PTH hormone is released, extremely inflammatory. And TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, also is released at night. When all of these are in excess, it causes problems. When we are super adrenalized because we didn't get enough salt during the day or enough food during the day, our body sends these types of hormones to inflame the tissues and get the sugar and fat and protein that we need. You know, I don't care what fad diet you're doing. I don't care what the advice is out there. Your body needs sugar. And when we don't get it in, your body becomes catabolic or your metabolism becomes catabolic instead of metabolic. Your body literally eats itself. So what it's important here because that is not, that's not a good place to be. One, it's wasteful and it's extreme. We're at, it makes us extremely vulnerable to diseases and it's frustrating. And it's why I do what I do to get the truth out there, to stop avoiding carbs. And it is, it's, it's shifting. There's a little shift where I hear, you know, the health and medical industry start talking about, um, you know, you, 
it's okay to have a little bit of carbs, but then when I find out the amount of carbs that they're actually eating, it's nothing. And then they're surprised why they have bad sleep and have bad anxiety. You gotta be okay with eating fruit and juice and potatoes and rice and carbs. Now, there are certain things that I want you to, want you to avoid and we're gonna go into that. But I'm, I'm gonna post some articles down in the description box below because this isn't new science. This has been around for a very long time. So these concepts, and it's just, unfortunately, it's just not um, taught as much anymore because think of all the prescriptions and all the supplements and the money that is wrapped around supplements for sleep. You know, and that's a whole other conversation that I didn't mean to dive down into. <laughs> but it's reality. This is reality here. And I fixed my sleep. I've helped many others help their sleep. And this is what it took. So it's looking at children is and watching them sleep is a really good example. You know, when kids are little and they can just, they just pass out. You know, it's like they're playing, 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 and then they pass out and then they sleep through the whole night. They're warm, right? They're always hot. It's like they're laying on you and you get like super sweaty and, and they're, you know, they're sleeping. This is because children's bodies produce energy efficiently. Their body is, it's functioning. It hasn't been banged up and screwed up yet. What, like most of our, you know, the adults that we know, including ourselves, um, they, they don't have that damage yet. Plus they're young. Youth is, youth helps. <laughs> so children can create energy, they sleep, and then they also give off the right amount of CO2. The more stressed we are, and the more our thyroid is um, functioning poorly, we actually tend to be more on the higher nitric oxide end. And this is all because we are restricting fuel throughout the day. And we're, we might even be consuming things that are harmful, such as polyunsaturated fats, nuts, seeds, berries, grains, salmon, fish oil, halibut, tilapia, I mean, any cold water fish. And, and this is, everyone is talking about it, how important, you know, um, omega-3s and, and um, fatty, essential fatty acids are, and fish oils. These are the very things that are encouraging these inflammatory maladaptive stress hormones to be produced in excess. Yes, we need them to survive cortisol, adrenaline, serotonin, cortisol, um, aldosterone. We need them, but not in excess. And when, when we're not eating correctly, and when we aren't living a lifestyle that promotes health, these maladaptive hormones they become abundant and that's when we we start getting a lot of problems so to turn this all around the first thing that you want to do i recommend is getting sunlight throughout the day the red light and sun the vitamin d that's in sun is extremely healing to our thyroid our metabolisms and our liver it actually helps our liver function better get rid of these toxic hormones or I should say, they're not toxic, but when they're in abundance, they cause problems. So getting rid of the excess. Sitting out in the sun, if you can handle 30 minutes a day to an hour, that's amazing. But sometimes a lot of people are so inflamed, they can't handle it. So they're, maybe they can just handle five to 10 minutes. That's fine, do that. Also staying away from polyunsaturated fats, the nuts, the seeds, the grains, the beans the salmon, the fish oils, everything that is recommended. <laughs> you know, anything that's talking about fast weight loss and this is how, you know, this is how to get healthy. These recommendations are not serving you and they are not benefiting you. You might be losing weight fast, but that is because you are in a catabolic stressed state. And that could be a whole other video that I can make. I'll write that down. Um, the next thing that you wanna do is have like orange juice with collagen. So that way you're getting carbs and protein uh, and salt. Have like 
eight to 10 ounces right before bed, 30 minutes before bed. This is gonna help regulate your blood sugar. This is gonna help antagonize and lower these, the serotonin, the adrenaline, the cortisol, the aldosterone. It's gonna help control the TSH, the PTH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, the parathyroid hormone, which you don't want in excess. Having a good glass of orange juice with collagen and just like a couple pinches of salt is wonderful. They're high in magnesium, they're high, or the juice, it's high in potassium, magnesium, you're getting calcium in there, you can even put a little bit of calcium powder in there. All of these guys are protective and it's what our body needs to sleep well. The next thing that you can do is having, um, like uh, this is actually my favorite, having um, like a good gelatinous collagen rich broth. You can make broth made from chicken feet. I know that sounds hideous and really, really weird, but it is so good. I'm gonna post the recipe or the link to the recipe in the description box. It is absolutely delicious. That collagen, and it's also high in glycine, is really, really good for the thyroid, really good for the metabolism. Plus having something hot stimulates the vagus nerve, very calm, very soothing, calming for our brain, for our gut. And I usually have like one to two cups right before bed. Again, the salt is going to antagonize serotonin. It's gonna help antagonize some of the inflammatory hormones. You're getting collagen, you're getting glycine, all of which just calms the nervous system down. The next thing that you can do is have milk. If you can handle milk, if your gut isn't too inflamed because that is what causes a, a milk issue for our digestive milk issue is the gut being inflamed with too much cortisol. If you can handle milk, have like honey, maple syrup, add a little pinch of salt to it. You, uh, Hershey Simply Five has a wonderful, it's a wonderful chocolate sauce. You can make your own chocolate sauce. You can get the calcium, the magnesium, there's gonna be some potassium in there. All of these minerals are, again, absolutely wonderful for you. Have like one to two cups right before bed, 30 minutes before bed. I know they say don't eat past six, don't eat past seven. I, I tend to take that advice and just let it, just throw it out the door because that has not helped anybody. So have, have snacks, sugar, salt, things that are really nutrient dense. These are what help you. Try it out. Let me know, post in the comments below if you have any questions. Reach out, talk about it. Because this sleep, it can be an easy repair. It can be an easy fix. But I'm telling you the solution is in our lifestyle and our nutrition. Obviously it's good to, you can stay away from staring at the TV, the, the laptop, getting away from screens right before bed, calming the eyes, calming the nervous system. Uh, oh, another thing that I'd like to do, I completely forgot about this, is Epsom salt baths. Taking an Epsom salt will give you the magnesium and the salt that you need. It's absolutely wonderful. Four to five cups of Epsom salt, put it in a bath, soak in it for like anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Sometimes I do an hour, you're really not supposed to do an hour because it requires a lot of fuel. So if you're gonna stay in there longer, really make sure that you have juice or a little bit of ice cream. Ice cream is wonderful for helping your sleep. It's sugar, fat, and protein. Try to use brands like Haagen-Dazs, Strauss, Turkey Hill is a, another really good brand, but a brand that only has four and five ingredients. Once they start putting in gums and carrageenan and soy lecithin and all this other baloney, it really wrecks your gut and affecting your thyroid. And just that in itself can screw up with your sleep. So start paying attention to what you're feeding yourself. Pay attention to how long of the gaps between eating you're having. If you're going throughout the day, not eating for four to six, maybe four to eight hours, that's a problem. That's a problem. You gotta fix that. Even if you're just sipping on some chocolate milk or juice or just plain milk or you know, coffee with plenty of milk. When I say plenty of milk, half coffee, half milk. You can put collagen in there, sugar. It's like it's, you can make it almost like your own meal. Sip on things throughout the day if you don't wanna eat. 
But all of these habits, and I'm going to list them in the description box. So if you don't, if you didn't get all of this down, look at the list and really start to evaluate if you have a healthy lifestyle. Have you been low in calories? Have, are you even getting enough minerals? How do you know? This is when food logging is crucial. And I recommend uh, chronometer.com. I use it. My clients use it. And what I like about it is it lists all the minerals. So I know exactly where I'm at. Okay. So it's all about having a balanced system, keeping those, you know, stress hormones in check. We do need them in order to survive, but they need to stay balanced. And in order to, for them to stay balanced, we have to think about our thyroid. We have to think about our metabolism. We have to be okay with feeding ourselves. And we have to be okay with eating carbs. You gotta stop staying away from carbs and you have to stop saying that carbs aren't good for you. Open up any high school biology, science, physiology book, whatever. And it will tell you point blank that glucose is the preferred source for the cells. It is the main source. You need glucose to turn into pyruvate. And from there, you create the cellular, you can have a good, healthy cellular respiration system. From there, within that system, is how we have a good Krebs cycle. From the Krebs cycle, that's how we produce ATP. That's energy. That's that energy production I was talking about and why children are so good at it. Because what are we always doing with our kids? Have you eaten? Where's our snacks? Do you have your snacks? Have you eaten? We're constantly making sure they're eating. And then we get busy as adults and then we don't feed ourselves. So look into your lifestyle, see where you can make adjustments. This is a very complex topic just because it's not talked about enough. And so the information is foreign, you know, like, what do you mean having carbs before bed? And what do you mean TSH? What's thyroid stimulating hormone? So if you have any questions, please post in the comments below. Contact me, my link. Uh, you can sign up for my, uh, my free email. I do, I go into detail about how to fix your sleep and um, reach out. Go to truehealthforyou.com. You can schedule a free consult with me. And I can give you pointers on, you know, really expand on this and, and really improve your sleep. Because when we have a good quality sleep, one, it's a sign of good uh, metabolism and, and thyroid function, but it's needed for weight loss. It's in, sleep is so important for weight loss. And it's important if you're dealing with pain, sleep is important to get out of pain. It's, sleep is where we repair and fix our body. So I always address the sleep quality first when I'm working with clients. So reach out to me. I would love to talk with you and help you. Um, if you have not liked this video, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and click that notification button so you know when I come back when I come back on. I will be making a sleep video part two and I'm actually going to show you um, some of the different tools that I use to encourage good sleep, like light therapy. I shared some of them already with you, the Epsom salt baths, but I will have a part two. Um, click that notification button so you know when I come back on again. Thank you for listening. This was a way longer video than I planned. So if you made it to the end of this video, God love you. <laughs> and you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.